<laughs> on top of the world. <laughs> no, really, <laughs> I'm just on top of my bathtub. Today I'm going to show you how to put the base coat and the veneer coat on a plaster wall. Before I had shown you how to mix plaster, some of the tools that we used. This is a great follow-up. This is my bathroom. It's kind of tight space in here. I had to make some repairs. So there's a scratch coat. Everything's been coated with plaster weld. Uh, Rochelle, Rochelle did a great job of painting that. And then after I finished plastering this, I'm going to show you Rochelle and she has uh, mixed our own lime wash paint, put in some earth pigments because we want this bathroom to breathe. We want it to be able to absorb the moisture when we take a shower. Not that we have a shower right now, it's a bathtub, but when, when we get a shower curtain installed here, after the plaster has been done, then the steam will absorb into the wall and then release back out rather than you seeing where it's dripped out. Yes, we could have installed a bathroom vent by code. We meet uh, code requirements, which is a bathroom window. So follow along today and we're going to put the base coat on and the veneer coat. So the two kinds of plaster that I'm going to use today are both USG products. They are gypsum plasters. They're not lime plasters. We chose to go with the gypsum plaster because of the cost. This runs 17 to $20 a bag for the veneer and a lime plaster runs about $50 a bag. We're going to go through a couple pallets of this stuff. So where to get this? That's the tough one. What I found, we're in an isolated area. We're a good hour from Richmond, uh, Virginia. And in our area, we're very rural. So in order for us to get the first scratch coat, which is Structolite, Structolite, I could order it from Lowe's, but I had to order an entire pallet. There are other products. I did search out for a plaster supply company and they had some, but I wanted to stick with USG. It's a brand I knew. So I went with Structolite. Structolite is the first coat that goes on the lath it's mixed with perlite, which is like crushed or popped volcanic rock. So it's like popcorn. It's got vermiculite in there and the vermiculite makes it lighter. So they call that structolite. And so that product goes on about three eighths of an inch. You really need the product to be light because you're going to be hefting a lot of it, putting it on the ceiling. You don't want it falling down. So that was the first coat gets scratched. That's the scratch coat. The next coat is the Imperial. The Imperial is the base coat. That has the gypsum plaster in it as well, like the veneer, but this one has an aggregate, which is sand. The sand grabs hold of the next coat. Where I've done a scratch on the scratch coat, there's a mechanical bond. But on these walls, which were the original plaster walls, it's probably not going to grab. So we use a product called plaster weld and plaster weld basically binds the plaster to the existing wall. If your walls are painted or even if they're raw plaster from years ago, you still need to have something that binds it. We wouldn't have to put the plaster weld on the scratch coat with the exception that when I plaster this out today with the base coat, I want everything to dry the same way. So by that, I mean, if I had to plaster uh, weld this, paint this on with this plaster weld, but didn't do the plaster weld on the scratch coat, the scratch coat would draw out all the moisture very fast. And then I would have two different setting times. I don't want that. So we plaster weld everything. So we're going to put the Imperial on first and then that will fill in all the imperfections and we're really trying to shoot for a flat surface. That's going to fill in the scratch coat. That's going to fill in some irregularities. And when I put on the veneer coat, I'll even use less. So the 
Structolite costs about $11, $12 a bag. That's less expensive. This is about 17, this is about 20. So the less material that I can use, the better. The intent of the veneer is just to get a slick for finish. So I don't wanna keep building it out in thickness. So it's about three eighths of a scratch coat, about an eighth of an inch for the base coat, which has the sand aggregate. And then the diamond is a really nice veneer plaster. What I like about this particular product is that when you skim it, and I'll show it to you later, when you skim it and try, you're trying to slick it out, it creates a lot of what they call fat. It's the part we're gonna rub off, that fat will help fill in the small imperfections. And then what we end up with is a really slick plaster wall. That's one of the aspects of plaster that I really appreciate. If I'm going for a drywall uh, sheetrock, it's, it's got the sheetrock, but it's paper on both sides. So that paper, you're gonna prime it and paint it. So really when you touch that wall, what you're really touching is paper and then primer and then paint. And most people, including myself, paint those walls with one color. So it's a monochrome color. It has a texture based on your nap of your roller. While what we're trying to achieve is something totally different. We're gonna put the base coat on, the veneer coat on. So now it's gonna be a super slick surface. It's gonna be hard as a rock because it is a rock. And then we're gonna use lime to color the walls. So now I'm gonna show you some of the tools that I've used to get this project done. So first of all, I start with some clean buckets. The water in here needs to be as clean as possible. Anything that's in there could set off the plaster catalyst. So I, I wanna try to be predictable. So I start with clean buckets, clean water. Then we've got our base coat and our veneer coat. These are 50 pounds a piece. Then I'm gonna mix everything, a half inch drill with a paddle bit. Again, I want this to be clean. Since the base coat has sand in it, I'm not as concerned of everything being clean. But then when I come to the veneer coat, a speck of sand can create havoc when I've got a nice good trowel going. It'll, that one little piece of sand will put a big scratch in my plaster, what an aggravation. So I want everything to be clean. Not as clean for the base coat because it has the sand aggregate, but I think you know where I'm going. I use a 14 inch trowel. I want to try and get as much on as I possibly can. Most of the work today, I'm going to use, this is a 14 inch by five inch trowel. This is by, I think it's Marshalltown. It is, it's Marshalltown product. Get the stainless steel one. If you use a trowel that just has the blue steel, it has rust on it. This is a midget trowel for small spaces, like to get in around the light switch. But this is gonna be my workhorse today. And then Nila, Nella, I don't know how you pronounce it. This is an awesome product. This is a Nella Flex. This is specifically meant for finishing out and troweling the finished plaster work. If you want to see some guys do some really good work, I would recommend going to Plaster for Beginners or Kurt Giovanna. I'll leave the links below. Those guys, that's what they do. They do it every day. They really know their stuff. I've learned a lot from them. And they're gonna have their own different trowels that they like to use. This is just a small sampling. It's what I'm comfortable with. A bucket scoop to scoop out. That's an, a narrow uh, midget trowel. I'm probably not gonna use the midgets today. 
and then just another scraper. Also, I use a nice sponge and a two inch chip brush. This two inch chip brush, once I put the plaster on the walls where I meet the corner in the ceiling or around this trim, dip it in water, gets rid of the sand, gets rid of all the small imperfections, then you're not dragging that into your next coat. That's a big tip. Thanks, Kurt, for that one. Sponge, I'm gonna try and keep all, all of my tools wet as I'm troweling, and you'll see, clean them off. And I do have a spray bottle. I'm gonna squirt that. Old school, they would take a paintbrush and pre-wet the walls as they're troweling. I just use a squirt brush, squirt bottle. That works good for me. So that's pretty much what I'm after today. So let's get to mixing. So I fill one bucket up. That's where I'm gonna keep my, my paddle bit and uh, it's a good source of water as I'm going along. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of water in here. Because you always wanna start with water and then put the powder in. You don't wanna put the powder and then put the water in. Same as baking a cake or any kind of recipe. So. Okay, so first I'm going to start with my base coat. What I'm trying to achieve here is for the plaster to be liquid enough that it will fold unto itself. I think that's a little bit thick, but the true test comes when, how does it sit? To me, that's too thick. but I'm really close. What I'm looking for is I see little chunks. So as it's coming up and folding into itself, I'm looking for it to be consistent without any chunks. Okay, I think I'm there. That's a little bit thin, but it's gonna kick 
and begin to solidify. So I need to kind of work fast. I think I'm going to go with that. I can see that I, I didn't mix it as well as I should have. It happens. So at this point, all I'm really trying to do is just get it on. I'm going to try to make it as smooth as I can as I'm going, but getting it on the wall, that's Premier right now. It's a messy endeavor. Everything needs to be covered. Floors, walls, doors. Get everything out of here. Okay, and I'm gonna add a little bit here. We're gonna see what happens. Now, in the last video I showed you, I used a Darby. That Darby is a little bit heftier than I want to use. I'm going to skim this out. Okay. I didn't show you this tool, did I? This thing's awesome. Now this is going to show me the high and low spots real quick. And I can use that material to hit some of the low spots. And this helps get my walls flat really quick. side to side. OK. 
Okay. Boy, this is a time saver and it makes the job really nice. This is a Marshalltown product. It's a skim. It comes in different sizes. Uh, I think I have a four foot, a two foot, and like a 18 inch. But right off, I got some hollow spots, but right off, that's a pretty flat wall. It is the base coat, so it gives me a good base to put my veneer coat on. I'm gonna work on this a little bit, but I, I gotta worry about time going by. I gotta get the other half of that wall. So, let's see here. Hit a couple low spots. Just throwing on some extra material. Maybe a little bit there. Okay. Let's go back at it. That looks pretty good. Okay, roll on. I'm gonna clean this tool real quick because I don't want it setting up. Trying to move fast. 